the Minneapolis City Council has approved a budget. This is going to cut the police funding in that city by $8 million. Now, the money will instead go towards mental health and violence prevention programs. So here to discuss further is Minneapolis Councilmember Jeremiah Ellison. Councilmember, great to have you here, sir. Thank you so much for joining us. So tell us a little bit more about the program specifically that that funding is going to go towards. Yeah, well, you know, I, I think here in Minneapolis, we just we've determined that uh, our police force has been taking on way too much. I think that's true for police force all over the country. But again, we're here in our local context and we can only control what we control. And so uh, we understand that mental health calls are one of the most time consuming calls for police officers and that they are often not the best response to that kind of crisis. Uh, we also know that um, that violence uh, uh, and this is true in in, in every city, but especially in ours, uh, that violence is, is usually perpetuated in your city by a small number of actors, um, and that violence prevention programs can work uh, and often do work in reducing violence. And so uh, we felt like it was smart for us to uh, put our, our money in those investments, um, not only for this year, but uh, but to more seriously tee them up as, as, as more complete programs in future years. And this is something similar that we're want, just President-elect Joe Biden is proposing as well. Now, it's interesting because the council made a last-minute change to the plan that really avoided any cuts to the number of officers in the city. Uh, this after the mayor there said that he would veto the budget. Uh, why did the council want to decrease this number? And could this still come up in the future down the road? Yeah, I think it will. You know, uh, what's funny about that number is we're, we're sort of dealing with some smoke and mirrors here, right? Uh, both the council and the mayor propose funding the same number of officer positions. Uh, what we're talking about is how many positions we will leave uh, technically vacant, um, uh, but still unfunded. And so those extra positions that were quote unquote added uh, aren't actually funded positions, uh, but they will just be vacancies that get to kind of sit on the um, on the rolls there. Uh, and so it's the difference between how many officers are we paying for um, and what is our quote unquote authorized sworn level. Uh, as far as how many officers the police, uh, the, the mayor proposed we fund and how many officers the council proposed we fund, that, that number hasn't changed, that number's the same. Uh, council member, as you guys have been making these changes, we have seen violence surge in Minneapolis uh, for, uh, basically after the days, still from the days of the sad unpassing of, of George Floyd. Are you optimistic that you guys will be able to get this under control and still be able to transform public safety at the same time? Yeah, look, I want to push back real quick. You know, I, we haven't seen violent, uh, uh, violence increase as we've made these changes because this is uh, our first budget since the murder of George Floyd. Um, and so we have not yet made these changes. We'll be making these changes um, uh, per our next budget year. We've seen violence increase, certainly, as people have lost their jobs due to, due to coronavirus and due to the economic downturn um, that has been produced by this virus and our federal government's uh, really incompetent response to the virus. We've seen, uh, like in other cities, like Ferguson and Baltimore, we've seen a rise in crime after a high-profile murder by the police of an unarmed black man. And so these are the things that, that, are, that, are, uh, that the evidence, that the, that the data tells us are contributing to that rise in violence, uh, not, um, not investing money into a mental health response, not investing money into violence prevention. Absolutely. And we know, you know, Minneapolis and other cities are having this conversation about their police budgets as well, moving into 2021 as well. So this is only really the first step in, in what will be many to come. What are you hoping this conversation goes to? What do you think the next steps will be and what do you see happening maybe at the end of the day? Yeah, well, you know, what I'm hoping is that um, we change the way that we do public safety here in, in, in this country, certainly in, in Minneapolis. Uh, we have done public safety one way. We've allowed policing um, to have a monopoly on safety. People think that policing is synonymous with safety. Um, uh, in Minneapolis, we're not going to see policing go away entirely anytime soon, right? That's not what any council member is proposing. Uh, but I do think that w as we have asked police to take on more and more of society's woes, uh, without any ability to do so, um, without being the right, without being designed to do so, uh, we've really set up our policing only model uh, to fail with in terms of public safety. And so I would love to see us really diversify the, the ways in which we engage public safety in our cities. Um, uh, uh, again, you know, not only are we going to be investing uh, some of this eight million into violence prevention and some of it into mental health response, we're also going to be moving a chunk of non-emergency calls that have been increasingly relegated to the police 
um, to our non-emergency line. Um, and so, uh, and so, when you have police taking on everything from people in the throes of a mental health crisis, you have them taking on uh, everything from. Uh, doing reports at fender benders to active shooter situations. I mean, what are the parameters of policing, really? Uh, I think that we need to tighten it up. And, and, and not only is that going to help us um, uh, streamline and, 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 and be smart with taxpayer dollars, but I also think it's going to equip us to keep our residents safer. Uh, Minneapolis Council Member Jeremiah Ellison, uh, great to have you here, sir. Thank you so much for coming on and talking with us today.